The world might have another economic crisis on the horizon. Its cause is China's real estate sector. You must have heard that Evergrande, one of China's largest real estate companies, has filed for Chapter 15 bankruptcy in the US while it continues the renegotiation and refinancing of its $340 billion debt. This is a huge amount of debt, roughly equal to 2% of China's GDP. Evergrande is one of many Chinese real estate developers in trouble. Another large property developer, Country Garden, has just warned investors of bankruptcy, with 43% of its debt coming due in the next 12 months and it needs more cash to repay them. Even with that scale, it's difficult to understand why China's real estate sector problem can become a potential global economic crisis with a spillover impact on our portfolios. But if you dig deeper, you'll see an intertwined web of problems and interdependencies across China and worldwide. This can be a big risk to individual investors even without direct investment in Chinese companies. We should first understand the risk and then protect ourselves against it. Let's talk about that. I am Huda Mer, founder and CEO of a stock card, and on this channel, I share detailed fundamental analysis and interesting investing-related stories. Later in the show, I tell you about a stock card and how it can help fundamental investors like you. For now, let's talk about China. China has a big problem in its real estate sector. Real estate has been one of its primary growth drivers. We all have seen images and videos of China's ambitious, large-scale real estate projects over the last few years. The country has been spending on real estate staggeringly, from big new cities, bridges and roads. The sector represents up to 30% of China's GDP and is the most significant contributor to the country's economy. This all-important sector has been facing a few challenges in recent years. The world became aware of the problems in 2021 when real estate giant Evergrande announced defaulting on $1.2 billion of its overseas bonds and planted the seeds of fear and panic. Two years later, in August 2023, Evergrande filed for Chapter 15 bankruptcy, buying time to continue to deal with its massive $340 billion debt without worrying about roughly $40 billion US debt and potential debt holder lawsuits and actions. And the debt issue isn't limited to Evergrande. Property developer Kaiza missed a $400 million bond payment. In January 2022, Shimao Group defaulted on a $101 million project loan, and Yuzu Group requested a deferral for repayment of its offshore bonds worth $582 million. Most recently, in August 2023, Country Garden, another prominent property developer in China, spiraled into a similar debt crisis. This company carries $35 billion debt, of which $15 billion, or 43%, is due in the next 12 months. Aside from bad planning and aggressive borrowing by these developers, they cannot meet their debt obligations because Chinese consumers are buying and investing in properties much less than before and have started selling what they have already owned. Most economists attribute this behavior to the consumer's pessimism and fear. But why the fear and panic? For years, as China grew, the middle class grew their wealth with the country, many in the form of investing in and purchasing real estate. Hear this. 
home ownership in China reached 90% in 2020, and as much as 70% of Chinese household wealth is tied to property ownership and investments. The real estate market in China is much bigger than middle class just buying houses to live in. It has been known as a a speculative market to make money by investing in the second and third and even more properties. You might have heard that Chinese investors have prepaid for Evergrande properties and now they are unsure if they can ever get the properties they were promised. Apparently, the largest source of income for property developers in 2020 was deposits and pre-sales like that. That year, property developers raised over $1 trillion from those two sources alone. Now, much of that investment may go down to zero and investors may end up with significant losses. If that's not as scary to an investor, then what is? It's easy to see why fear is spiraling in the market. That fear could result in lower demand for new properties, pre-sales and investments, which means lower prices. And we all know this, when real estate value starts decreasing, consumers see their wealth eroding and their confidence in the real estate sector goes down with it. As a result, fewer buyers are in the market, further dragging down the prices. Existing homeowners and property investors would also decide to sell their homes and properties to lock in their capital gains. Selling pressure pulls the prices down, creating more panic selling in the market. According to the official data, new home prices have slipped 2.4% from a high in August 2021, and existing homes have dropped 6%. Unofficial numbers paint a much grimmer picture. For example, local agents have reported that value of real estate properties near Alibaba's headquarters has dropped 25% or more and prime real estate in Shanghai experienced a 15% drop or more compared to their peak in 2021. As the property value goes down, demand and investments drop, and real estate developers run out of ways to make money to pay their debt. But the problem doesn't stop there. Of course, those debt problems and bankruptcies are real issues for those companies' investors. More importantly, they will inevitably spill over to the rest of the economy and market. Real estate developers have billions of dollars in debt to the banking system. If they can't sell their properties or have to sell them at significantly lower prices than anticipated, and if they can't get more loans to refinance their existing debt, which was true for a while because of a policy in China that has been put in effect to manage property developers' debt, ironically, then they will have limited liquidity to pay their debt. From there, the domino effect starts. Banks that lend money to them will have a limited liquidity. Customers who have deposits in those banks would rush to withdraw their money and then those banks run out of cash and cannot cover their own liabilities. The domino effect continues. Only a few months ago, we saw a real example of what a bank rush can do to a bank when California-based Silicon Valley Bank ran out of cash. This bank rush hasn't happened in China yet, but we already see the evidence of fear in the market. For example, Country Garden's bondholders have already started panicking that they may not get the expected yield, selling their bonds in fear. A $1 billion note by Country Garden due in January now trades at 13 cents on the dollar. So far, everything we've discussed 
is easy to understand and quite universal. This could have happened and has already happened in many other markets in the last few decades. But then the story continues. China's real estate problem threatens local governments across the country because of unique land ownership laws in China. Before discussing that, let's take a break from China because I want to tell you how a stock card, the fundamental investing platform my team and I have built for investors can help you. We talked about how real estate investing has become crazy speculative in China. In fact, a few years ago, the Chinese government used the phrase houses are for living in, not a speculation, to criticize the rise in second and third home speculative investing by Chinese citizens. The same goes for other forms of investing. Stocks are for long-term wealth building, not a speculative trading. You use facts and information to understand the growth potential, financial strength, and valuation of companies on your radar, and you invest in them with open eyes and a detailed understanding of what you are investing in and why. But gathering and evaluating that information in detail every time you have a new company or ETF in mind is hard. We are all busy, and even if you enjoy doing fundamental research, we only sometimes get to do it. That's why my team and I built a stock card. It gathers more than 300 pieces of information about every publicly traded company and exchange traded fund from reliable sources such as Morningstar, Benzinga, and other world-class data providers puts them all together and visualizes them in an intuitive format anyone can understand. If you have watched the video up to this part, it means you really care about understanding the world and must also care about understanding the companies you are investing in. And a stock card is a great tool for you. Head to stockcard.io, create a free account, and search for a few companies and ETFs you have in mind. You'll see how powerful and easy a stock card is and how it can help you do your fundamental research easier and faster. Even if you are a beginner investor, we have a step-by-step -step guides to help you educate yourself. I link those guides in the show notes. Hope to see you around on a stock card. Back to China. China's real estate problem is also a huge issue for local governments because of how these local governments make money. In China, lands in the cities belong to the government. Companies buy the right to build the property over the land from the government for 70 years land use sales revenue and real estate taxes represented 38 percent of the local government's revenue in 2020. this revenue will decrease if the real estate sector slows down estimates have shown that some provinces received less than 20 percent of their annual land use rights revenue in recent years the real estate sector's dismay has already created a major budget issue for local governments in China. And in China, local governments are responsible for investing in infrastructure. They are biggest spenders and a source of employment for locals too. Lower revenue means lower spending and lower employment across Chinese provinces. So as we discussed, the problem isn't just that Evergrande and Country Garden are running out of cash. The problem can be as big as the middle class losing their wealth, the banking system losing liquidity, and local governments losing revenue. 
as you can imagine, this is a huge and potentially catastrophic problem for the Chinese economy. It is no wonder the International Monetary Fund, IMF, forecasts less than 4% GDP growth for China for next year. This growth rate indicates a more than 50% drop in the country's economic growth compared to the past four decades. A 50% drop in a country representing almost 18% of the global GDP is a big deal. Even more importantly, according to BCA research, China has been the source of more than 40% of global economic growth over the past decade, compared with 22% from the US and 9% from the Eurozone. And of course, China is a major trade partner to the US, Japan, Germany, India, Australia, and many other countries. Bringing it to our portfolios, about 7.6% of the S&P 500's total revenue comes from China, according to Factset. The tech companies in the S&P 500 make 16% of their revenue from China, semiconductor companies get 27% of revenue from the country. For example, the country represents 20 to 25% of Nvidia's revenue. The world economy is a massive web of interdependencies and connections. If China is in trouble, so is the rest of the world. What can we do as individual investors? First of all, before panicking and taking your money out of the market in fear of China's threat to the world economy, we must say that there is still hope and the Chinese government may very well be able to control the situation before it becomes a crisis. These measures include cutting the interest rate, giving mortgage-related incentives, and working with property developers to manage and refinance their debt. The government has already taken lots of actions to manage the threat. The risk for individual investors is when someone invests without considering the possible hidden risk that may arise from this situation in China. As they say, the blade you don't see usually cuts the deepest. For example, suppose you are pouring money into Nvidia because it is skyrocketing due to the AI demand. As discussed earlier, you must also consider that a possible economic crisis in China is a risk to your Nvidia investment. In my view, the proper response to possible economic crisis as stemming from China or any other reasons is always the same. Invest continuously, preferably automatically, and based on logic. Invest in things you have researched well and understand and not on the news whim. Only invest the money you don't need to pay for your food, rent, mortgage, and other immediate needs and Always be mentally and financially ready for the risks you may not have seen coming. If you found this episode helpful, subscribe to the channel and like the episode so I know you are interested in more of these deep, deep dives into interesting investing-related stories. See you next time.